Welcome to the course of country studies. Today we're going to speak about one more interesting topic concerning the United Kingdom. Lecture 13. Religion in Britain. The lecture plan will cover the following topics. Religion and politics. Also we shall speak about freedom of consciousness, the Church of England and other conventional Christian churches other religions, churches, and religious movements in Britain. The vast majority of people in Britain do not regularly attend religious services. Many do so only a few times in their lives. Most people's everyday language is no longer as it was in previous centuries, enriched by their knowledge of the Bible and the English Book of Common Prayer. It is significant that the most familiar and well-loved English translation of the Bible, known as the King James Bible, was written in the early 17th century, and that no later translation has achieved similar status. It seems that most people in Britain cannot be strictly described as religious. However, it doesn't mean that they have no religious or spiritual beliefs or inclinations. A majority approve of the fact that religious instruction at state schools is compulsory. Almost nobody objects to the fact that the Queen is the grace of the God, or the fact that she, like all previous British monarchs, was crowned by a religious figure in a church and that the British national anthem invokes God's help in protecting her. The religious conflicts of the past and their close relationship with politics have left only a few traces in modern times, and the most important of these are institutional rather than political. Those facts are the fact that the monarch cannot by law be a Catholic, the fact that the 26 senior bishops in one particular church, the Church of England, are member of the House of Lords. The fact that the government has the right of veto or the choice of these bishops. The fact that the ultimate authority for this same church is the British Parliament. Despite the atmosphere of tolerance and the separation of religion and politics, it is in Britain that we find the last two cases in Europe of established churches, that is, churches which are by law the official religion of a country. These cases are the Church of Scotland and the Church of England. The monarch is the official head of both, and the religious leader of the latter, the Archbishop of Canterbury, is appointed by the government. However, the privileged position of the Church of England, also known as the Anglican Church, is not in modern times a political issue. Nobody feels that they are discriminated against if they do not belong to it. In any case, the Anglican Church has shown itself to be effectively independent of government, and there is general approval of this independence. In fact, there is a modern politics and religion debate but now it's the other way around, that is, while it is accepted that politics should stay out of religion, it is point of debate as to whether religion should stay out of politics or not. The Anglican Church is the official state religion in England only. There are, however, churches in other countries such as Scotland, Ireland, the USA and Australia, which have the same origin and are almost identical to it in their general beliefs and practices. Members of these churches sometimes describe themselves as Anglican. However, the term officially used in Scotland and the USA is Episcopalian, which means that they have bishops to rule. And this is a term which is often used to denote all of these churches, including the Church of England as a group. Every 10 years, the bishops of all the Episcopalian churches in the world gather together in London for the Lambeth Conference, which is chaired by the Archbishop of Canterbury. Despite the name Canterbury, the official residence of the head of the Church of England is Lambeth Palace in London. Although the Anglican Church apparently has much the largest following in England, 
and large minorities of adherents in other nations of Britain, appearances can be deceptive. It has been estimated that less than 5% of those who might describe themselves as Anglicans regularly attend services. Many others are christened, married and buried in Anglican ceremonies, but others hardly ever go to church. Regular attendance for many Anglicans is traditionally as much a social as a religious activity and predominantly one for the upper and middle classes. The doctrine of the Church of England was set out in the 16th century in a document called the 39 Articles. However, the main motivation for the birth of the Anglicanism was more patriotic and political than doctrinal. As a result, it has always been what is called a broad church, willing to accommodate a wide variety of beliefs and practices. For example, the nature of its religious services varies quite widely from church to church, depending partly on the inclinations of the local priest and partly on local tradition. After the establishment of Protestantism in Britain, Catholicism was for a time an illegal religion and then a barely tolerated religion. Not until 1850 was the British Catholic hierarchy re-established. Only in this century has it been as open about its activities as any other religion. Although Catholics can now be found in all ranks of society and in all occupations, the comparatively recent integration of Catholicism means that they are still underrepresented at the top levels. A large proportion of Catholics in modern Britain are those whose family roots are in Italy, Ireland or elsewhere in Europe. The Irish connection is evident in the large proportion of priests in England who come from Ireland. Partly because of its comparatively marginal status, the Catholic Church, in the interest of self-preservation, has maintained a greater uniformity than the Anglican Church. In modern times, it is possible to detect opposing beliefs within it. There are conservative and radical liberal wings, but there is, for example, more centralized control over practices of worship. Not having had a recognized official role to play in society, the Catholic Church in Britain takes doctrine and practice, for example, weekly attendance at Mass, a bit more seriously than it is taken in countries where Catholicism is a majority religion, and a lot more seriously than the Anglican Church in general does. In many ways, Anglicanism represents a compromise between Protestantism and Catholicism. Its stated doctrine, which rejects the authority of the Pope and other important aspects of Catholic doctrine, is Protestant. But its style, as shown by its hierarchical structure and its forms of worship, is rather Catholic. When Protestantism first took root in Britain, there were many people who rejected not only Catholic doctrine, but also Romish style. These people didn't believe or didn't join the newly established Anglican Church. They regarded both the authority given to its clergy and its continuation of orthodox ritual as obstacles to true worship. Instead, they placed great importance on finding the truth of oneself in the words of the Bible and on living an austere life of the hard work and self-sacrifice. They disapproved of the pursuit of pleasure and therefore frowned on public entertainment such as the theater, on drinking, on gambling and on any celebration of life. This is the origin of the Puritan Calvinism tradition in Britain. The first church within this tradition was the Presbyterian Church. In Scotland, this form of Protestantism was so strong that it became the nation's established church. The Church of Scotland has a separate organization from the Anglican Church. It has no bishops. Its head or moderator is elected by its General Assembly. 
It is the biggest religion in Scotland, where it is often known simply as the Kirk, the Scots words for church. There are also many Presbyterians in England and a large numbers in Northern Ireland. In England, those Protestants who did not accept the authority of the Anglican Church were known as dissenters and later, as the tolerance grew, as non-conformists. These days when refusal to conform to the established church is irrelevant, they simply called members of the free churches. A great many different free church groups have come into being over the centuries. In the details of their organization, styles of worship and doctrinal emphasis, the various non-conformist groups differ considerably. However, they all share in varying degrees certain characteristics. They regard simplicity and individual prayers as more important than elaborate ritual and uh, public ceremony. There is comparatively little difference between their clergy and their lay members. They praise self-denial, although to a lesser extent than the original Puritans. For example, many are teetotal. Their members do not drink alcohol. Since it's a multicultural country where the pressure to confirm is comparatively weak, Britain is home to followers of almost every religion and sect imaginable. Some of these are offshoots or local combinations of those already mentioned. For example, the only church of distinctly Welsh origin calls itself both Calvinistic Methodist and Presbyterian Church of Wales. The number of followers of all the traditional Christian churches have been slowly but steadily declining in the second half of the 20th century. Other Christian sects and churches have been growing. Because of the energetic enthusiasm and their desire to attract new followers, they are sometimes characterized by the term evangelical. The fastest growing type of evangelical Christianity, however, places less emphasis on dogma seeing or giving people a code of behavior. Instead, the emphasis is on revelation. Gathering often involves joyful singing. There is a belief in spiritual healing of the sick. The oldest existing church of this type in Britain is called Pentecostal, and this term is sometimes used to denote all such groups. Pentecostalism has had a small working class following for many years. Its recent growth is among the middle class. Some people are turning even further afield, beyond the bounds of the Christian tradition. The term New Age is used to cover a very wide range of beliefs, which can involve elements of Christianity, Eastern religions and ancient pagan beliefs all mixed in together. Interests and beliefs of this kind are, known not, are not new in Britain. Despite their great variety and lack of exclusiveness, two features seem to be common to all New Age beliefs. First, an emphasis on personal development, often seen as spiritual development. Second, respect for the natural environment. The remaining religious groups with significant numbers of followers in Britain are all associated with racial minorities. The most well-established of these are the Jews. Anti-Semitism exists in Britain, but for a long time it has been weaker than it is in most other parts of Europe. The security and confidence of Judaism in Britain can be seen both in the healthy proportion of Jews in Parliament and in the fact that within it there is quite openly the same struggle between orthodox, conservative and liberal radical viewpoints as there is in the Anglican and Catholic churches. The numbers of followers of the Christian Orthodox, Hindu and Muslim religions are all growing, mainly because of the high birth rates among families belonging to them. Finally, it is necessary to mention what are called cults. The beliefs of these groups vary so widely that it is impossible to generalize about them. 
What they seem to have in common is a style of their belief, involving absolute commitment to and unquestioning obedience of the leader around whom they are centered. Cult have a bad reputation for using mind-controlled techniques. Their extremist tendencies are often offensive to most people, and uh, with a few exceptions, each individual cult is tiny. However, it has been estimated that there are between 500 and 700 of them in the country, and that taken together, they have nearly half a million followers. Comprehension questions. There are some comprehension questions for you to discuss and to do in written form. So you should answer the following questions. In what ways does the Church of England is typical of the English character? What are the essential differences between the Church of England and the Church of Scotland, the two established churches of Britain? And two more questions. What are the characteristic features of New Age beliefs? And in what ways and to what extent can different churches and religions in Britain be associated with particular geographical areas and particular social classes? Thank you for your interest in country studies. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel.